Good to be in God's house tonight, amen. Good to, good to know whether or not you're going to heaven or not. John said in 1 John, These things have been written to you that you may know that you have eternal life. And uh, if you know that you have eternal life, it's because the Bible tells you so. Not because some church tells you so. Not because a priest or a preacher or whoever tells you so. Think, certainly not the government telling you so, amen. But it's the Bible telling you so. So we're studying hell. And uh, go ahead and turn to Psalm 9, because that's really where it all begins as far as understanding who goes to hell. This is the part called the occupants of hell. Who's in hell? And uh, I think, let me go back here to this list here. When we started this study, I put these names up on the screen. Hugh Hefner, Stephen Hawking. Fidel Castro, Janet Reno, Shimon Perez, Carrie Fisher, Arnold Palmer, Jerry Van Dyke, Tinky Winky, George Michael, Zsa Zsa Gabor, John Glenn, Florence Henderson. All of these people are people that died in the last year or two. And to our knowledge, to my knowledge, none of them were right with God. So, what that means is, can even famous people go to hell? Can kings and queens go to hell? The queen, usually monarchs of a, of a country or any kind of empire, they see themselves as untouchable. They cannot be around the common people because they are of a higher class and a higher status than everybody else. In hell, everybody rubs shoulders. Your neighbor is the lowest scum of the earth, like you were, even though you might have been the most exalted person in the world. Um, I favor a monarchy, monarchy in England because of the royal letters patent that the King James Bible is under. I favor a ruling person in England, whether it's the queen or when she, she's in her 90s now, at some point, at some point, the queen of England is going to turn her toes up, be buried six feet under like everybody else is. And then her son, Prince Charles, will assume the throne, and I'm in favor of that as simply because of the protection that the monarchy has over not changing the King James Bible. But that doesn't mean that every king or queen of England has been born again, saved, and is on their way to glory. That does not mean that. The queen believes herself to be a devout Christian. I'm not anyone to... I can't judge her. I can't say, well, she is or she isn't. That's not my place. But if she does not know Jesus as her Lord and Savior and has, does not have the Holy Spirit being born again, she will rub shoulders with the worst people that's ever walked the face of the earth. She'll be right next to him screaming for all of eternity. Because God is no respecter of persons when it comes to everlasting life and or His judgment. Keep that in mind. Heavenly Father, we ask for Your grace tonight. We thank You, Lord, for the grace that we have already given to us. We thank You, Lord God, for the manifestation of that grace and that mercy and that favor. Lord, with the forgiveness of our sins, Lord, You have chosen to put your spirit in us and that spirit in us causes us to believe what this book says we don't doubt it we don't dispute it we may not understand it all but we regard its words as being sacred and as far as authoritative things in this world there is no higher authority than your word in the form of this bible and we thank you for it we ask you god that you shine the light of your word upon our hearts and your Holy Spirit guiding us and leading us, Father, and give us a, giving us understanding, giving us the true meat of the Word, and not just the milk. Help us to understand deep things. Help us to understand profound things. Father, give us wisdom 
that the greatest minds and the scholars of this world never understood. Father, you know Stephen Hawking. You know uh, the depths that his, you know the intelligence that this man had. His ability to understand the most profound things of the universe, and yet he did not believe in you. His mind simply would not allow him to believe in a creator of all the scientific knowledge and facts that he had. He still did not know the answer to where we all came from. And so, Lord, you have already situated him into his eternal, everlasting abode, wherever that is. And Father, now, whatever knowledge he may have had in this life, now he knows the truth. And Father, we pray, dear God, that you would just use this little church and these that have gathered here tonight, Lord, to make a profound impact upon this world and teach it the truth concerning what happens after we die. Lord, open their eyes. We believe your word. We pray, dear God, that you would use the services and the teachings here on hell, Lord, to open the eyes of others, that they would understand that they are going to live in one of two places. And Father, you have opened heaven's gates so that whosoever will may come. And the invitation is offered to every man. But Father, Lord, there is also hell whose doors stand open and await those who simply choose not to trust in you and believe. So Father, use this, dear God, to change somebody's mind, change somebody's heart. Open up your hand and feed your people tonight, we pray in Jesus' name. And all of God's people said, Amen. So, let's see, is my mic, they're asking my mic on. Let me check. No, I bet that battery's dead as a doorknob. These batteries. the statement when he was with the Beatles we're more popular than Jesus Christ right now okay well guess who's still alive and who's not okay who who'd you say Laura Bon Scott ACDC Prince Michael Jackson yes John Denver John Denver was somebody who was trying to attain godhood. He belonged to a New Age cult called Earhart Seminary Training. Werner Earhart started this New Age cult in Colorado, and John Denver was part of it. And Denver made a, uh, he did a Life magazine uh, interview in the 70s at the height of his, of his rise as an as a, um, entertainer. And he said, I believe I will be a god one of these days. Okay, he was drunk when his plane crashed. He was flying an experimental plane, and he was drunk out of his mind when that plane crashed. Okay, somebody else. Jim Morrison's dead. The doors. He found a door that was open. Unfortunately, it was the gate of hell. Somebody else. Marilyn, Marilyn Monroe. Okay, John Kennedy, President of the United States, dead and in hell. It doesn't matter how many last rites the priest performed on his body. He had two Catholic priests standing there performing the last rites over his dead body at Parkland Hospital in Dallas, Texas, and he could have had 20 of them speaking Latin, sprinkling holy water over his dead body. He was in hell, okay? So anyway, it doesn't matter how famous you are. It doesn't matter what success in life you achieve. It doesn't matter politically if you're the president, the chief of 
the Supreme Court, doesn't matter if you're the Speaker of the House, the President of the, of the Senate, President of the United States, King or Queen of England, it doesn't, it doesn't matter if you're the Emperor of Japan, and they refer to him as the Sun God. The Emperor of Japan is believed to be a living God on this earth. And yet, when these emperors die, they bow before the Son of Righteousness and proclaim that He is King and that He is Lord. Every one of them does. So who goes to hell? Psalm 917. And then uh, Psalm 55. The wicked, the wicked shall be turned into hell, all the nations that forget God. Uh, as part of my Sunday school lesson uh, this morning, I never got to it, I will though, I was looking at things that are false. And I started looking at various Bible, the modern Bible translations and how they render certain verses. The Christian Standard Bible, that's what they want to call it now instead of the Holman Christian Standard. Holman is, Holman Publishing is the Southern Baptist Publishing Company. They own it. So it was called the Holman Christian Standard. Now it's just called the Christian Standard. So they're trying to market it to others other than Southern Baptists. But the Holman Standard Bible says in Psalm 917, the wicked shall be returned to Sheol. Returned to Sheol. Returned. And I'm looking at that and I'm going, according to that, we were there before and now we're returned to See, they didn't even say hell. They didn't even use the word hell there. And that's a big, I may do that on a PMO one day, is just look in all the places where the modern Bible translations have erased hell out and replaced it with the Hebrew word sheol or realm of the dead or grave or Hades anything in the world except hell. If I say the word hell, let's, let's do a little, what is that, that little psychology test. I'm going to give you a word and you tell me the first thing that comes to your mind. Hell. Fire. fire. That's universal. Hell is fire. And everybody has that in their mind. And now it, you cannot teach the doctrines of hell, you cannot teach them correctly from these modern Bibles. Because, like I say, out of 54 occurrences of just the word hell in the King James, there's only 13 remaining in the NIV. 13 times the NIV uses the word hell. The rest of them have been replaced with Sheol, Hades, or, realm, or grave, or realm of the dead, or anything, anything other than hell which is associated with fire. And, and here, Holman Christian Standard Bible, the wicked shall be returned into hell, giving you the idea that, uh, actually, shall be returned to Sheol. Basically, they're wanting you to think that Sheol is the ground. Man came from the ground. Man returns to the ground. And so, according to this, that's all there is. You, you came from the ground, you live a wicked life, when you die, you return to the ground, and that's it. That's what you're going to get from these new Bibles. You're not going to get the wicked shall be turned into, not returned, turned into hell and all the nations that forget God. Okay? Very, very important. And the... And, these guys that come up and say, oh, I believe the same thing you do. I just use an NIV. You do not, you cannot speak the same doctrine that we speak. You cannot believe the same doctrine on hell that we speak because your Bible doesn't use the words. Hell doesn't use that word. Turn to Psalm 55. Psalm 55. Open your Bibles. Get your Bibles open. Don't look at the screen. 
Psalm 55, 12, For it was not an enemy that reproached me, then I could have borne it, neither was it he that hated me, that did magnify himself against me, then I would have hid myself from him. But it was thou, a man mine equal, my God, mine acquaintance, we took sweet counsel together, we walked unto the house of God in company, let death seize upon them, let them go down quick into hell, for wickedness is in their dwellings and among them. And I want you to notice in this verse, Psalm 55, 12, church people go to hell. Look at that. We took sweet count, verse 14, we took sweet counsel together and walked unto the house of God in company. Let death seize upon them and, them and let them go down quick into hell, for wickedness is in their dwellings. Church people who will not conform to the word of God, who will not conform to God's righteousness, will not conform to the gospel. They may go to church. They may say amen. They may pay tithes. They may be on the church membership role. They may be Sunday school teachers. They may be board members. They may be elders. They, may be, they can be the pastor for crying out loud. But if they are not born again, if wickedness is in their dwellings and they will not conform to the word of God, they will go to hell. Okay, that's tough stuff. Proverbs 5. You know what? I've already covered a lot of that. That's, that's not where I wanted to be. Let's go to uh, Psalm 140. Psalm 140. I went back a little too far in my notes here. Psalm 140, verse 9. As for the head of those that compass me about, let the mischief of their own lips cover them. Let burning coals fall upon them. Let them be cast into the fire, into deep pits, that they rise not up again. And this is concerning those, he said, those that compass me about, let the mischief their own lips cover them. All of those who are in opposition to the church, the, and I say, and I mean the true church. Not any one particular church building or one church denomination or whatever, but the real church. Those who are in opposition to the church. Remember I, what I was preaching this morning about the world does not like the stand that we take on morality issues. So they are right now setting up to destroy church people with immorality so that they will not be against them anymore. Okay? Um, why did Russia never really go to war with the United States? Khrushchev had it in his mind. Of course, we've outlived Soviet Union, but Khrushchev had it in his mind that if the immorality in America continued to increase then Russia would never have to invade America. America would just fall and crumble on its own. And of course, we've outlived the Soviet Union, but what he said is still true. Okay? So, the occupants of hell are those who, with their mouth and their sayings, they are in opposition to what the church believes and stands for, and they will be cast into the fire, into deep pits, and they will not rise up again. In Psalm 11, verse 6, Upon the wicked, here's that word wicked again, He shall rain snares, fire and brimstone, and an horrible tempest. So hell is not just a, a flame burning. But it is a fire storm. Have you ever seen one of those? In forest fires, forest fires that get so hot and they demand so much oxygen to keep the fire going, they will, these large fires will create their own weather systems. They will draw in so much wind and air to the fire to feed the fire that it will literally cause whirlwinds, tornadoes of fire, tempest, a tempest of fire in those big fires like that. That's what hell, it's not just like the fire in your fireplace. It is a stormy tempest of fire. That's how hot that is. It is, a, it is literally 
God's furious fire. Okay? If you can imagine a fire storm, which, by the way, I've seen advertisements for some of these New Apostolic Reformation meetings. They build them as firestorms. We are going to call down the fire of God upon us at our meeting with there's going to be signs and miracles and there's going to be people we're going to bring down the fire of God upon people and I mean I've showed some of these clips of people literally screaming in agony beating themselves like they were on fire because a devil inhabited them and they felt that they were in the flames of fire and they called that the Holy Ghost. That's not the Holy Ghost. That's God's wrath. That's God's judgment upon people who will not turn to His Word. They're turning to signs and miracles and wonders. But they will not turn to the Word. This shall be the portion of their cup. Um, I was going to teach, I was going to stick in here a little bit about this idea of the Holy Grail. And I, and I won't do that, but suffice it to say, there are two, just like there's two of everything in the Bible, there's two rocks, there's two vines, there's two cups. There's the cup of righteousness, which is what we partake of when we have our, by the way, we need to have our communion feet, well, I forgot all about it. We need to have our communion feet washing service, but the cup that we partake of is unfermented grape juice, no leaven in it whatsoever, no alcohol, amen? Okay, and it, is the, it represents the cup of salvation that we, what we have already drank. Taking communion does not save you, it does not keep you saved. It is a showing forth of what we have done in our soul. We have drank this cup already. They have a different cup. Um, those who follow the new age, those who follow cults, those who, Laura, you mentioned getting into witchcraft. You were searching for, you may not have called it this, you were searching for the Holy Grail. You were searching for occult enlightenment that would turn on a light inside of you to where you would understand the secrets of the universe, the secrets of and the mysteries of all religions. You would understand this, you would understand that, but it's a blind it is a, it's a false light. And, it, and Paul said, can you drink of the cup of Christ and the cup of devils at the same time? No. So this holy grail that represents the, the achievement of all religions, nobody's ever found it. And theologically speaking, the point of all the religions of the world is to keep people constantly searching and never finding. But in Christ, you start out finding. You, oh, as soon as you are saved, you found it. There's no need to keep searching. You already got it. Amen? It's instant and the enlightenment is, you know that Jesus is God, you know that he died for your sins, that he rose again on the third day, and that he, through him and only him is the, is the means of salvation. That's it. It's not any more illuminating than that. But if you have that illumination, you are leaps and bounds above everybody else in the universe. But that's, I was going to throw that in here, but I decided not to. <laughs> okay, which I just threw it in there. Isaiah 5, turn there. Isaiah 5, here's, here's what happens when people do a certain thing. Isaiah 5, 24, Therefore, as the fire devoureth the stubble, and the flame consumeth the chaff. How quickly does stubble and chaff burn? Yeah, both, both you guys did the same thing. Logs take hours. Stubble and chaff, just like that. It's very quick. And you keep that in mind. Anybody listening to me that's lost, if you remain lost, 
your life will be snuffed out as quick as stubble is burnt. As quick as a match is lit. That's how quick your demise and your death is coming to you. You'll never know it. You'll never know it. You'll never know what hit you until you wake up one day standing in front of God. And you'll go, how did I get here? Turn around, look, you died. And you had no idea. You never saw it coming. So, therefore, as the fire devoureth the stubble and the flame uh, consumeth the chaff, so their root shall be as rottenness, their blossom shall go up as dust. Because, and there's another four, there's four things here. As the fire devoureth the stubble, flame consumeth the chaff, their root shall be as rottenness, their blossom shall go up as dust. The remedy to that is the gospel. Okay? Because they have cast away, what? The law of the Lord of hosts, and despised the word of the Holy One of Israel. They got rid of the Bible. They despise the Bible, okay? So, how can we say that like Stephen Hawking, most brilliant theoretical physicist in the entire world, able to chase down the very origin of the Big Bang itself in his mind, how can we say he's in hell? He rejected the Bible. There's a video, I started watching, Bill Nye, the science guy, and Kent, uh, Ken Ham from the Creation Science Institute and he's walking him through the ark there in Kentucky and of course Bill Nye's got his little stupid little bow tie on and he's just he's mouthing the whole time there's no way in the world he's going to believe this nonsense about the Bible and creation he has cast away the law of the Lord and despised the word of the Holy One of Israel but it's not just him it's any church, any pastor, any pew member that decides that God is in some other place or what they're searching for is in some other place other than the Bible. They cast away the law of the Lord and the law doesn't always mean the Old Testament. We have a new law that we're under. When you cast away the law of the Lord, you're casting away the new covenant. It is the law of Christ. You cast that away, you, have, you, were, you were born going to hell. Now that you've cast away the only thing that would save you from hell, and that is being born again of incorruptible seed, now that you've cast that away, your hope is over with. There's no hope for you. You're not going to heaven. 1 Samuel 23, for rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness is as iniquity and adoption. This is what Saul did. Saul rejected the word of the Lord. He rejected it. He despised it. When Samuel brought, what, what Samuel said to Saul was the Bible. Or uh, old timers say the gospel truth. It's the gospel truth. Meaning it's as true as the Bible is. Saul rejected that. He reje At one time, Saul yielded to it, but then rejected it. And so God said, because rebellion, your rebellion, Saul, is as a sin of witchcraft, and your stubbornness is just like idolatry. You never bowed in front of an idol, but you're stubborn. It's, God said it's the same thing. You never practice cooking up conjuring things in a in a pot you never cast a spell on somebody but your rebellion is just like someone doing witchcraft it's the god said it's the same thing so for rebellion for stubbornness for casting away the law of the lord for despising and rejecting the word of the lord people go to hell okay so Pope Francis Pope Francis is he going to hell but he's the Pope he's the vicar of Christ he is the Holy Father he's rejected the law of the Lord he's going to hell and all his robes and all his crowns and all of his papal authority and all his papal bull will not save him. Proverbs 9. 
Proverbs 9. Turn there. Proverbs 9, 13. A foolish woman is clamorous. Remember, Proverbs has two women in it. Strange woman, foolish woman, the wise woman, the church. The foolish woman is the souls of all lost people. Their, their soul is a woman, and their soul is foolish. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. So, Bill Nye, um, all these physicists, all these scientists, Neil deGrasse Tyson, all these, these guys have brilliant minds, but they say there is no God. They are, a, for all the PhDs that they have, they are a fool because they will not reckon this one truth that there is a God. They don't believe it. So this foolish woman is clamorous. Somebody look that up for me. It was clamorous. Get your phone out. Look that up. She is simple and knoweth nothing. For she sitteth at the door of her house on a seat in the high places of the city to call passengers who go right on their ways. Whoso is simple, let him turn in hither. And as for him that wanteth understanding, she saith unto him, Stolen waters are sweet. And bread eaten in secret is pleasant. You know what she's getting at, don't you? Having an affair with me, it's the best thing in the world. Best thing in the world. I had a lesbian tell me that her experience with another woman was the best thing she had ever had in her life. And she was married to a man. She was married to a preacher. And she told me that being, being with a woman was better than anything that she had ever had in her life. Stolen waters are sweet, bread eaten in secret is pleasant. But he knoweth what is clamorous. There you go. Loud women. Okay? Contrast that with a godly woman who has a meek and a quiet spirit. Okay? So you have the loud woman who's, in, who's Oprah Winfrey, Joy Behar, everybody on the view. Everybody on the view. Okay? They are loud, clamorous, foolish, liberal, socialist, God-hating women. So they stand there, she stands there, and she calls in the simple-minded, foolish men. Says, come have an affair with me, it's the greatest thing in the world. But he knoweth not that the dead are there, and her guests are in the depths of hell. Who in here knows the words to Hotel California? That song. Okay? Hotel California is hell. Because the words are, you can check out any time you like, but you can never leave. Okay? Hotel, I'm telling you, Hotel California is hell. And the Eagles wrote, and you go back and look at those, you, you look at this, her guests are in the depths of hell. And you compare that with the lyrics to Hotel California. I promise you, when the Eagles wrote that song, hell was in, they had the spirit of hell in them. Writing that song. Just as we sing godly hymns out of our hymn books, and praise and worship to God. The devil's got his music that teaches about hell and teaches about how great it is and teaches about how, how you, when you go to hell, it's going to be one big party and everything. Yeah, they're not telling you the truth. Amen? So the occupants of hell, number one, is the foolish woman and all the souls that she calls in unto her to destroy them. And so watch this. Here is the foolish woman calling. She's loud. She's clamorous. She's calling to all those that walk by her, getting them to go to hell. Here's the virtuous woman who is imparting wisdom in public to give to people, begging them, don't go that way. Begging them, 
Listen to the words of God. Listen to the sweet words that God has given you. Listen to this wisdom that we have in the Bible. That's the church who is out there in the streets trying to make the sons of men know the wisdom of God and the words of God by way of the Bible. We're trying to get people to go to heaven. She is enticing people to stay in hell. Okay? I, so it's like two churches. Isaiah 5, turn there. Isaiah 5. Verse 13, therefore my people are gone into captivity because they have no knowledge. I'm going to challenge everybody. I'm challenge everybody. Can you quote 10 verses out of the Bible right now? If I asked you right now to stand and quote word for word, Ten verses out of the Bible, could you do it? I'm not going to do that, because I don't want you to fire me. <laughs> Knowledge means I know what the Bible says. You cannot know it if you have not memorized it. Can you, from memory, quote 10 verses out of the Bible? Can you, as the militia, defend doctrines of the faith on your own? Can you defend what it is that you say you believe by yourself and we, Donna, is we're here to help giving you the software to do it with because that's the age we live in. Now, if you know how to flip through your Bible and find it, that's great. In fact, that's probably better. But if you can't, we've given you for free the tools to use to be able to show people why you believe even if you can only remember a couple words, you can use those to look them up and find the verses and say, right here is what I believe. Listen, just because you can't do it on the fly, that doesn't mean you lost the argument. The fact that you can, you can say, give me one hour, and in one hour, I will give you verses, and I will show you why what you're telling me is wrong. Okay? Can you do, you're the militia. I can't stand and fend off all the attacks against your faith for you. I can't be everywhere, especially with all y'all online. I can't come to North Carolina, to California, to Kansas, Minnesota. I can't go down to Florida. I can't be everywhere for everybody doing everything. I can't do that. You're the militia. It's your family, it's your farm, it's your land, it's your home, it's your faith. Therefore, my people are gone into captivity because they have no knowledge. It's like Reg walking around with a copy of the Constitution in his pocket. Not a bad idea nowadays. And people have no knowledge. If you don't know what our laws are, corrupt governments will destroy you. And their honorable men are famished, and their multitude, look at their honorable men. That means your honor. Judges, go to hell. The multitude dried up with thirst. Therefore hell hath enlarged herself. Look at this. Hell, have you ever seen a snake eat something? A snake has got a mouth this big until it strangles a deer. And when it strangles a deer, it enlarges itself to consume that deer. That's a good, listen, you ought to go on YouTube and watch these snakes swallow stuff. It gives you the willies, doesn't it? That's hell enlarging herself. She's making room to consume everybody that she has to consume. Hell has, hath enlarged herself and opened her mouth without measure, and their glory and their multitude and their pomp 
and he that rejoiceth it shall descend into it. And the mean man shall be brought down, and the mighty man shall be humbled, and the eyes of the lofty shall be humbled. Why are they going to hell? No knowledge. All they learn about everything else in the world. They learn about cars. They learn about computers. They learn about sewing. They learn about discounts. They learn about TV shows, they learn about video games, they learn about this, and they learn about that, but they refuse to touch a Bible and know one thing about it. They refuse it, okay? Isaiah 14, boy, turn there. Here's the chief going to hell right here. Here's the chief. Isaiah 14, 9. Hell from beneath is moved for thee to meet thee at thy coming. It stirreth up the dead for thee, even all the chief ones of the earth. You see that? Who's in hell? The chief ones of the earth. Okay? Belshazzar. Belshazzar's in hell. Belshazzar was the chief king of the entire world. The Babylonian kingdom was the head of gold, remember? And Belshazzar ended up taking over Nebuchadnezzar's place... And he died, he's in hell right now. He's the chief one in hell. So hell from beneath has moved for thee to meet thee at thy coming. It stirreth up the dead for thee, even all the chief ones of the earth. It hath raised up from their thrones all the kings of the nations. So even kings die and go to hell. So verse 12, how hath thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? It is not the morning star. He is not the day star. All your other Bibles destroy that. They hide Lucifer and they cast the morning star out of heaven. That just irritates me. That's a burr in my saddle. That gets me going. How art thou cut down to the ground which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. Imagine looking at the throne, the clean, pure, white throne. Does the Queen of England ever get her hands dirty from fixing her car? Does she shovel manure from her horses? She clean up doggy doo-doo in the palace? She, does she have dishwater hands from washing dirty dishes? She never gets dirty, does she? If she's lost, she's going to wallow in ashes for eternity. All of her pomp, all of her circumstance, all of her regalness, all of her robes, all of her white adornment, everything going to dirty her for all of eternity so the chief of all of God's creation Lucifer himself the highest the the anointed cherub that covereth Ezekiel called him hell is going to stir itself up and get ready to open her mouth for him and all the chief ones that are already in hell are going to be stirred up to receive Lucifer, the highest of God's creation, down into hell. Why? Rebellion. Pride. Pride. Isaiah 28. Who goes to hell? Verse 14. Wherefore, hear the word of the Lord, ye scornful men that rule this people which is in Jerusalem, because ye have said, we, made a, we have made a covenant with death and with hell, or we had agreement. Now, I'm searching that one. I got that in my radar sights. I want to know exactly what that means, but I'm going to tell you what I th think it's related to. Turn to Revelation 6. I think it's related to Wyatt Earp. That's a tombstone reference. <laughs> Hell's coming with me. Uh, Revelation chapter 6, verse 8. And I looked, and behold, a pale horse, and his name that sat on him was death, and hell followed with him. Okay? Now, if you notice, these are the four horsemen. Four. 
It's the opposite of the gospel. You see, they made, watch this. Here's, here's part of this I know for a fact. Two, two times I heard this come out of God's mouth. Incidentally, both of these guys later on got their heart right with God. But two times I heard men out of their own mouth say this. We were trying to witness to them. One guy was a guy named Mitch, and his dad was notorious in the area that he lived in. His dad was a mean, drunk, mean, rascal man. And his son was trying to follow in daddy's footsteps, trying to catch up with his meanness, and never would get right. And I've sat down with him and tried to give the gospel to him. And here's what he said. I made my own deal with God. I believe that I can go hunting, fishing, do whatever I want, drink my beer. He had boxes of pornographic magazines, boxes of them. And he said, me and God got our own thing going. I'm, I believe that my good deeds are going to outweigh my bad deeds. Okay? That's what I heard him say. He made, he did not make a covenant with God. God already offered his covenant through his son, Jesus Christ. He made a covenant with death and with hell. Because his covenant with death and hell let him drink, let him look at his boxes of pornography, let him not go to church, not ever read a Bible, not believe anything, let him do whatever he want to, but as long as he maintained as a good person on the outside, God was going to let him go to heaven. Two people that I know for a fact told me that to my face, incidentally, both of them got saved, okay? They realized that their covenant with, and if you look in um, Isaiah 28, God said he's, he disannuls it. He makes it go away or something like that. Where, where am I looking at here? Verse 18. Your covenant with death shall be disannulled and your agreement with hell shall not stand. Okay? But the idea is, is that I made a covenant with death and hell and when God's wrath is poured out, it's not going to touch me. I made a deal with the devil, in other words. I made a deal with hell and I think the, that fourth horseman coming out, I think that is related to the false gospel, the other gospel. Because, because of that significance of that number four, and right here they made an agreement with death and with hell, and I think the world somehow, some way, has a false gospel system that gives them immortality, but... And it will not allow death or hell to consume them. That's what they think. And God here plainly says, I'm going to disannul both of those covenants. And when the overflowing scourge shall pass through, you shall be trodden down by it. It's you, the, the covenant that you made with hell so that hell wouldn't get you, I disannulled it. And hell's going to eat you up. You made a your wrong covenant with the wrong God. And I disannulled it. And hell is not going to have to abide by your terms. When hell is turned loose, hell's coming after you. That's what I think that that means. Okay? The occupants of hell are the people who, who said in their mind, me and God have got our own thing going and I can do whatever I want to. They're going. They're going. Let me finish this page out and I'll let you go. Matthew 23, 29. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For you build the tombs of the prophets and garnish the sepulchres of the righteous. And say, if we had been in the days of our fathers, we would not have been partakers with them in the blood of the prophets. They're lying through their teeth, and Jesus knew it. So in verse 31, he says, Wherefore ye be witnesses unto yourselves that ye are the children of them which killed the prophets. You're, the, you're their sons. Fill ye up then the measure of your fathers, ye serpents, ye generation of vipers. How can you escape the damnation of hell? If you are, listen, you're either a son of God or you're a son of Belial. And if you're born of this earth, you are automatically by your birth a son of Belial. 
That's why your DNA looks like two snakes coiled up. Okay? You're of your father, the devil. Whatever the devil does, that's what you do. Does the devil lie? Yep, you lie. Does the devil steal? Yep, you steal. Does the devil kill? Yep, you kill. Does the devil covet? Yep, you covet. You are your father, the devil, and you're going to hell. And then Ephesians 2, look at this. Wherein in time past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in who? Children of disobedience. You're of your, children of disobedience means you're a son of Belial, child of the devil, generation of vipers. Whatever your father is, that's who you are. He sired you through your earthly father and mother. So you get it honest. When they say sin is genetic, I believe it. It was given to me by my forefathers. I inherited sin by my ancestors. Okay? And well, I, could, I could speculate what they were going to try to remove in people's DNA to where they won't die. But remember, death is because of sin. Man won't accept the cross so he wants to escape the curse of his sin by some other way. And in doing so, he's making a covenant with death and with hell. And when he does, God's going to disannul it. They're going to hell anyway. Let's stand to our feet.